positive in the bad news today. Some yeah. uh, deeply concerning stuff coming out of uh, the Bulldog camp. What's your new development? So when, when all that was happening, my mental health was non-existent. I was, I would lock myself in my room. I wouldn't leave my house. Um, I just hated the world and it was all because it was all my fault, no one else's fault but mine, but I was, I went through a pretty big thing of depression there and um, it was tough, like I just didn't want to talk to anyone. It was so hard for me to open up to anyone. Um, just being able to, to probably just sit and cry with someone. Um, as a man, it sounds a bit taboo or whatever and not everyone likes it, but to be able to do that, I think it, it's massive. It, it really helped me on my journey, yeah. Dealing with that was hard. Um, there was times there where I thought my career was over, also like my life, like there was times where I was down in the dumps and I was really struggling, but um, to be where I am today kind of makes myself proud. Um, just knowing that I've, I let a lot of people down, but I feel like the way I, I'm carrying myself now, I'm restoring the faith in a lot of people. Um, to know that I can go home to my mum and dad and know that they're proud of me again, it's something that's massive for me. We got carried away Um, you know, I know myself, I'm not, not a real talkative person or, um, you know, don't really feel comfortable opening up or talking about my feelings at all, but uh, I think you, you'll realise once you get to a certain stage that, you know, if you don't get help, then, then you know, you'll be helpless and, um, you know, you'll struggle even harder than, than you think and, you know, I think that, that's huge. Especially in our sport today and um, in our Polynesian community, it's, it's, you know, there's a huge stigma around it. Um, you know, it needs to change and, you know, I think that's, that's what us people need to realise is that we need to be able to be comfortable and, and talk about how we feel. Back then, you know, there was no social media, there were no phones, there were no cameras. Uh, on your phone so uh, the players in our day it's a different generation and we've had to uh, learn and educate the players on how to deal you know these type of scenarios so yeah for me so social media is like it's it's a crazy world um, and I just think that for me the best thing for me is just being put my phone down um, I had uh, there was a stage there where after a game I'd get death threats racial stuff and like there was this, I, there was no positives in me having my Instagram like that. So I've actually gone and changed the settings where you can't message me unless I follow you, which has been massive. Um, but there's always just going to be people out there trying to tear you down. Yeah, the mental health side of rugby league is uh, a, a large factor. Uh, for, for us players, we take, we take the wins and the losses, but sometimes losses can uh, really affect us because it obviously means a lot. That's our livelihood. and. You know what football's like, there's, there's the ups, but geez, there's some downs. So we've got to give them those tools and create those good habits. So when those tough times come, like I said, those crisis management plans we have in place and their wellbeing plans we have in place, we, they just fall into place. With mental health, uh, a big part of that is, um, that helps me is my religion. I feel like it always keeps me calm. And, like just knowing that like, you shouldn't like, like uh, God is God is gonna be the one that's gonna judge you at the end of the day, and like whatever you do, like everyone else is just you know, a human being. You know what I mean? And I feel like once I was running up and down the field, and everyone like there's these big names and all that. I just feel like like we're the same. You know what I mean? I only feel God, and that's how I feel like sometimes. Men, like mentally, it keeps me strong like that, and um, yeah, just always like having a strong background support through my family, cousins and all that. Like you just feel invincible, especially like when you're on the when you're on the field, like no matter what, like they've always got your back and they're always gonna help you. I just think um, for me, being able to open up to, to my mum and my family was just massive. Like I don't think I'd be here today if it wasn't for them. Every game I played, you know, in grade I just soak it all up and 
you know, try to live in the moment as, as best as I can. Um, you know, just because just it's a reminder every day that, you know, I couldn't have been here or, um, you know, I could have taken my own life and, and things like that, that, that kind of make me feel grateful. So I think it's a lot more emphasized now every time I run out and every time I pull that jersey on, it's just have excitement and, and you know, that's probably why we love our fans so much because they give us so much hype and so much support. Just down here at Lionel Watts, the home of Burroughs Eagles, my junior club. You know, I remember playing my first game and mum put me in headgear and we were just playing down here. And um, mum put me in headgear and dad rocked up and he goes, what are you doing in headgear? And then, uh, no, I was, scored my first try just down here. I was obviously playing across fields in under eights and yeah, it's pretty special memories, pretty special memories. Yeah, I'd probably just say my parents. I know it's a bit cliche, but they're, um, they're both very hardworking people who um, not have always had the, like everything go their way in their lives, but have just persisted and continued to work hard and um, have created family that um, is very strong and bonded together. And like to me, family is so important and having that tight knit group and what, we've like, what they've established is um, important to me. And then uh, my life is trying to gonna try to emulate that and uh, create a successful life for myself and, um, whatever the future holds. Yeah, and no, it's uh, Lana Watts, uh, Burrow, the home of Burroughs. It's a, it's pretty, um, pretty special to me. Uh, I, I played my first game in rugby league just over there um, in under eights, and from there I just fell in love with the game. And uh, there's a lot of memories, special memories at, at this oval and uh, around this local area. And um, yeah, it's, it really does mean a lot to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure who started the Preston Mania. Um, I guess little fan club, but uh, um, I'm pretty sure it was one of uh, one of a uh, Bulldogs fans, pretty diehard fan. That's what I've been told by some people. So uh, yeah, I guess it's it's pretty cool to kind of have that following, and yeah, I just hope I can continue playing good footy and um, yeah, making them making them proud. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's funny. It was like you know we kind of just just clicked as soon as we met each other. Um, you know we knew of each other, but never knew each other personally. Um, and I definitely consider him a close friend. And I used to play against Franklin, big Frankie Pelle growing up and he was one dude you did not want to tackle. He was just so, so much bigger than everyone else and so much more powerful. And then I got to know Frankie and he's honestly one of the most wonderful and uh, nicest blokes you get to know. Like on the outside he's this big tough man but uh, he's, he's really, he really is a really good friend and um, whilst he's a good footballer he's also a great mate. So um, really, uh, it's a really, really special relationship that um, I hope continues into the future. You kind of came in, into training as, as one of those unknown guys and I uh, just started chatting from there and, and you know we'll probably go into training one time walking and then we're just saying oh, how's, how good is this we could be working and we could be doing this so um, yeah just to see him you know getting all just all the rewards that he's worked hard for you know he really deserves it. Yeah so obviously at the start of the year my main goal was just to uh, make my debut at some point this year but um, ever since like I've talked to a lot of like I used to talk to a lot of people and they used to uh, players that have played first grade and they said once you've made a debut all you want to do is play play more so and that's exactly what I experienced as soon as I um, played that first game at Brookvale Oval against Manly in round one um, I just wanted to to play the next game and the game after that and for me it's just making sure that every game of first grade I play um, I treat it like it could be my last and never taking advantage of the opportunity and um, yeah, so every time I run out for the Bulldogs, it's a, I consider it a very special privilege. And yeah, I just love, love doing it. Yeah.